the new 8 o'clock on CNN. Parker Spitzer, weeknights on CNN. Since we mentioned President Obama in the introduction, and this past couple weeks has not been his best stretch, the midterms, the trip to Asia, yeah. you're, you're still a supporter. You're, yeah. Yeah. you're also into marketing. What would you tell him to do? I think his communications department has let him down a bit, and I think that uh, people are a little impatient, which is our reality. I mean, you have to remember when the president took office, we were losing 800,000 jobs a month, and we're not losing any jobs now. I mean, did he fail to sort of explain where we were going? Because there are two schools of thought, those who say it was all messaging and those who say, look, the public just didn't like the substance. You're saying it was messaging. Well, you know, there are a lot of people who are moderate and conservative who voted for him and they were afraid. And, and they see a little bit of green light, you know, and maybe they believe that it was just George Bush and not the whole Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And maybe they believe now they're not as afraid. And, but, but the truth is Ob uh, President Obama spoke about a lot of issues that mattered to me and to mm -hmm. some of my, the, the people that I care about. And I think that we have to continue to push those messages. He had gay rights. I'm a big gay rights activist, an animal activist. He yep. got support from that community. Lots of uh, the environmental uh, rights community cared a lot. And I think that those people, those messages are important. And to get his core back, he has to speak directly to his core. Well, so. you know, when he was campaigning, he, he spoke all the time in terms of unity, a unified nation. And then when we got to Washington, of course, he found out that governing is a lot harder than campaigning. Yes. Do you still think he has that message in him? I think the idea of unity is, is a tough one when you have these parties and their, their interests are, there's so many lobbyists and there's so much, you know, this, uh, the politicians have so much struggle, you must know mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. sticking to a message, mm -hmm. if the message is not funded properly, right. you know, and it's tough being a politician. I mean, I would never want to do that. It's a tough job. To take one issue you mentioned, gay rights, which you, yeah. you, where you've been an advocate, the gay community is looking at the president saying, where have you been on don't ask, don't tell? Yeah. In other words, and so th this is one That's example. That's a communications issue because think about it. Don't, don't ask, don't tell. He says he wants it to stick. <laughs> we had a Congress in a... Right. And the Senate at one time, he could have worked on making it stick, but since he lost that, it was for him to make a statement then. He could have made that statement then, and he could have also made it clear that he had this bigger vision mm -hmm. than to take advantage of the opportunity he had on Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And I think he could have pushed it, and I think all of those things, those progressive ideas that he spoke about publicly, he should have went to, George Bush did everything he promised and more, mm -hmm. right? And more, you know, for the conservatives and for the support system that he built up. And I think that it was President Obama's mission to, to do everything he promised and more. Well, he promised you know? an awful lot, though. I mean, I well, think one well, of the he, problems he has is promising time. too much up front. And also, don't you think that, that his deification by, among others, the media, uh, put him in a hot spot? It was pretty hard to follow through with everything everyone expected. Well, the media, you can't have much faith in, in them. You have to work around them or be creative it when now. it comes. Well, <laughs> I was on... <laughs> You know, the media, the media, look what they, I mean, the choices for the news. I mean, they don't put human suffering. They don't mention, they, you, you could be talking about a missing girl for, for three months and never mention the 15,000 Africans that died for lack of clean water yesterday. Or you won't talk about the 200,000 innocent Iraqis who were killed, you know, and, and, and you only talk about the 4,000 American soldiers who were killed in the invasion. The media makes choices. The 10 billion suffering farm animals, they're never uh, on the top of in, the media. They need ratings, I guess. So this, this reality that we live in, what should be or could be news when it comes to, to make, creating better li lives for all of us, Americans and others, that's not in the media. You know, the media is not, does not have the people's best interest in the heart. I live across feet from ground zero. That Islamophobia that spread from the media, from that place, the idea that you talk so much about, about uh, this guy burning a book, got 30 people. Create yeah. an international catastrophe. Down in Gainesville, Florida. The, One guy's burning a book. He's got no con congregation. He becomes an international uh, example of American hate, and that's the media. So I, you no, know, I, I agree I don't with have you. There's no reason to give uh, attention to these sort of fringe people that suddenly yes. become dominate the conversation and distract us from things that do matter. But there is such a thing as, as, as empathy fatigue. You know, I think there comes a time when people yeah. just can only suffer vicariously for such uh, for so long.